Inside the world's largest particle accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider LHC, is the largest atom smasher in the world. Located 300 feet below France and Switzerland, it's a 27-kilometer long particle accelerator that collides protons and heavy lead ions. The LHIC is currently conducting some of the most important high-energy physics experiments in the world. Let's step inside this gigantic machine. Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time we upload a new video. Inside the accelerator, two high-energy particle beams travel at close to the speed of light before they are made to collide. The beams travel in opposite directions in separate beam pipes, two tubes kept at ultra-high vacuum. They are guided around the accelerator ring by a strong magnetic field maintained by superconducting electromagnets. The electromagnets are built from coils of special electric cable that operates in a superconducting state, efficiently conducting electricity without resistance or loss of energy. This requires chilling the magnets to minus 271.3 degrees Celsius, a temperature colder than outer space. For this reason, much of the accelerator is connected to a distribution system of liquid helium, which cools the magnets as well as to other supply services. Thousands of magnets of different varieties and sizes are used to direct the beams around the accelerator. These include 1,232 dipole magnets, 15 meters in length, which bend the beams, the 392 quadruple magnets, each 5 to 7 meters long, which focus the beams. Just prior to the collision, another type of magnet is used to squeeze the particles closer together to increase the chances of collisions. The particles are so tiny that the task of making them collide is akin to firing two needles 10 kilometers apart with such precision that they meet halfway. All the controls for the accelerator, its services, and technical infrastructure are housed under one roof at the CERN Control Center. From here, the beams inside the LHC are made to collide at four locations around the accelerator ring, corresponding to the positions of four particle detectors, ATLAS, CMS, ALICE, and LHCB. The cows grazing by the roads outside Geneva, Switzerland, have witnessed some pretty strange things these past few years. Trucks roll by carrying giant superconducting magnets that look like missiles and other brightly colored pieces of scientific equipment. The pieces are all taken to warehouse-sized buildings where they disappear down shafts that reach 300 feet into the earth. The work is all part of an $8 billion project at the International Physics Laboratory codenamed CERN. At its heart is this enormously powerful particle accelerator capable of smashing subatomic particles together, reproducing the energies that existed a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. What comes out may solve some fundamental mysteries about how the universe is put together. To visit CERN these days is to feel very small in all sorts of ways. Christoph Schaefer, one of CERN's safety personnel, says one of the electromagnets is almost 2,000 tons. That's the weight of five jumbo jets, or one-third of the weight of the Eiffel Tower. With only seven inches of clearance, the electromagnet is lowered into the hole. The shaft is round, white-walled, and well-lit. The magnet is a gray metal cylinder. It looks like it might be part of a space station. It sits inside a vast red octagon and layers of scientific equipment. Following an upgrade, the LHC now operates at an energy that is seven times higher than any previous machine, and CERN is the world's largest laboratory and is dedicated to the pursuit of fundamental science. The LHC allows scientists to reproduce the conditions that existed within a billionth of a second after the Big Bang by colliding beams of high-energy protons or ions at colossal speeds, close to the speed of light. This was the moment around 13.7 billion years ago when the universe is believed to have started with an explosion of energy and matter. During these first moments, all the particles and forces that shape our universe came into existence, defining what we now see. The collider is only one of the three essential parts of the LHC project. 
The other two are the detector, each of the four main detectors sits in huge chambers around the LHC ring to detect the outcomes of the particles colliding. There is also the Worldwide LHC Computing Grid WLCG, a global network of computers and software that is essential to processing the masses of data recorded by all of the LHC's detectors. The LHC is truly global in scope because the project is supported by an enormous international community of scientists and engineers working in multinational teams all over the world. They are building and testing equipment and software, participating in experiments and analyzing data. The UK has a major role in the project and has scientists and engineers working on all the main experiments. In the UK, engineers and scientists at 20 research sites are involved in designing and building equipment and analyzing data. UK researchers are involved with all four of the main detectors and the computer grid. British staff, based at CERN, have leading roles in managing and running the collider and detectors. The total cost of the project was shared mainly by CERN's 20 member states, with significant contributions from the six observer nations. The LHC project involved 111 nations in designing, building, and testing equipment and software, and now continues with them, participating in experiments and analyzing data. The degree of involvement varies between countries, with some able to contribute more financial and human resources than others. CERN has never been involved in research on nuclear power or nuclear weapons, but has done much to increase our understanding of the fundamental structure of the atom. The title CERN is actually a historical remnant from the name of the council that was founded to establish a European organization for world-class physics research. CERN stands for Conseil European pour la Recherche Nucléaire, or European Council for Nuclear Research. At the time that CERN was established between 1952 and 1954, physics research was exploring the inside of the atom, explaining the word nuclear in its title. The council was dissolved once the new organization, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, was formed, but the name CERN remained. The LHC does produce very high energies, but these energy levels are restricted to tiny volumes inside the detectors. Many high-energy particles from collisions are produced every second, but the detectors are designed to track and stop all particles except neutrinos, as capturing all the energy from collisions is essential to identify identifying what particles have been produced. The vast majority of energy from the collisions is absorbed by the detectors, meaning very little of the energy from collisions is able to escape. Collisions with energies far higher than the ones in the experiment are pretty common in the universe. Even solar radiation bombarding our atmosphere can produce the same results. The main danger from these energy levels is to the LHC machine itself. The beam of particles has the energy of a Eurostar train traveling at full speed, and should something happen to destabilize the particle beam, there is a real danger that all of that energy will be deflected into the wall of the beam pipe and the magnets of the LHC, causing a great deal of damage. The LHC has several automatic safety systems in place that monitor all its critical parts. Should anything unexpected happen, power or magnet failure, for example, the beam is automatically dumped by being squirted into a blind tunnel where its energy is safely dissipated. This all happens in milliseconds, meaning that the particles would have navigated just less than the three circuits before the dump is complete. Many physicists hope that the Large Hadron Collider will help answer some of the fundamental open questions in physics, which concerns the basic laws governing the interaction actions and forces among the elementary objects, the deep structure of space and time, and in particular the interrelation between quantum mechanics and general relativity. Data are also needed from high-energy particle experiments to suggest which versions of current scientific models are more likely to be correct, in particular to choose between the standard model and Higgs less model, and to validate their predictions and allow further theoretical development. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out more videos on our channel, and thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.